Sodium is a very big deal with our health. Sodium is a naturally occurring electrolyte. It's in food, it's in about everything you eat, and it's found in especially high amounts in processed food, in restaurant food, and fast food. We actually need some sodium. We need 500 milligrams of sodium a day. Sodium is used in our body by the cells for nerve transmission, for the cells to communicate with one another. For any American that has high blood pressure or chronic kidney disease, or is over age 50, or is African American of any age, needs to limit their sodium to 1,500 milligrams per day. The average American consumes somewhere between 3,500 milligrams and 5,000 milligrams of sodium per day. For those people that have high blood pressure, sodium in those large amounts is especially bad because the sodium makes us hold on to fluid and therefore it actually raises the blood pressure. It makes blood pressure much harder to control. Sodium is actually much more important for African Americans to pay attention to because of something called salt sensitivity. The effect of sodium raising blood pressure is actually much more enhanced than anyone who has African American heritage. Most people think that might come from their salt shaker at home, but it doesn't. 80% of that sodium comes from eating out at restaurants, fast food, and also processed food. Processed food might be things that surprise people. A pickle, for example, has been processed. So a pickle, it's not made at home. Pickles contain anywhere from 500 to 1,000 milligrams of sodium. Processed meats would be like bacon and also bologna or hot dogs. A hot dog can have anywhere from 800 to 1,000 milligrams of sodium in just one dog. Some common burgers that we love at some of our favorite fast food places contain anywhere from 1,500 up to two or even 3,000 milligrams of sodium per burger. That's before any french fries and that's before soda. There's even sodium in soda. We would encourage people not to eat out at fast food very often at all. Make that a special trip, very rare. Cooking at home, eating at home, is the safest, healthiest way to go. Most foods are gonna have sodium in them because sodium is naturally occurring in the ground as a trace element. So it's going to appear in any meats that we eat, any dairy products, and certainly any vegetables that are grown out of the ground. So even natural, even fresh foods have naturally occurring sodium in them. It's part of the reason why most people find that they could reach their daily limit pretty quickly from even eating just fresh food. Surprises might be cottage cheese, for example, which has about 240 milligrams per half cup serving. American cheese for uh, a one ounce serving might have upwards of 100 to 200 milligrams per serving. So sodium is really present everywhere. A lot of baked goods will also have a lot of sodium in them too, partially because of the baking soda and also we use salt in a lot of baked goods because it's a nice contrast with the sugar. So when you see a lot more sugar being added to a product, generally there's going to also be a lot more sodium. The same would go for ice cream and other sweets and candies. More sugar usually equals more salt. Soups tend to be some of our worst sodium offenders and ramen tends to be one of the worst of the worst. In one serving of ramen, there can be anywhere from 800 to 1100 milligrams of sodium. And ramen tends to come in those packages that are really convenient for us, whether it's a styrofoam cup or a little package plastic wrap and that is usually two servings in that package. So if you were to eat both, which most people tend to do, they're going to get somewhere between 1600 and 2400 milligrams of sodium in that serving. A person with high blood pressure who should limit their sodium to 1500 milligrams would already be at almost double their daily in just that one meal time. The very good news is that if you do lower your sodium intake, your blood pressure will come down. In many studies, it's shown to actually happen within just a couple of weeks. It's actually surprisingly easy to start to reduce your salt. Usually, if you just start day by day to cut back little bit by little bit, your taste buds actually change every two weeks. So you'll get used to eating less salt. You won't even miss it. If you keep doing that, cutting back a little bit every two weeks, between six and 12 weeks later, you could be completely off all additional salt. Not only will food still taste the same, you'll enjoy it, but if you were to try to go back and eat the way that you used to eat, food would generally be bitter, and some patients have reported that it actually burns their tongue, so they don't miss the salt. It's just a matter of taking it slow.
The best way for people to find out how much sodium is in the food that they're eating is to actually take the package, turn the product over, and read the nutrition facts label. Even if you're at a restaurant or a larger chain, you can request that information and it's usually available in the larger chains, either there at the restaurant or on their websites. There's even new apps for people that have smartphones and right there in the restaurant, as long as you have a signal, you can look up nutrition fact information right away at the store. I always caution people to make sure that you pay attention to the serving size and that you know for that individual item what that serving size might be, whether it's how many cookies or how many crackers or how many cups, for example. And then how many serving sizes are in that package. Sometimes labels can be misleading and there might be two or three servings in the package, so you would have to double or triple the amount of sodium to really understand how much sodium you're getting if you eat that prepared processed food. One of the best ways to lower your salt intake at home is to not cook with salt. And then to make your food more flavorful, to use herbs, spices, lemon, lime. One could even use vinegar, say for example, in cooking vegetables and greens. You could saute your fish, meat, or vegetables in red wine and white wine as well, because that the alcohol will actually evaporate off while you're cooking, but it'll leave behind the zing that most people want from their salt. If you go to the store and you buy a product that says reduced sodium, it's important to know that that only means that there's a 25% reduction in the sodium content of that product. If it's already a larger amount of sodium in it, it's probably guaranteed that even at that reduced level, it's still too high, especially for someone with high blood pressure. I'd recommend still turning the can over, turning that product over, reading the nutrition fact label, looking for sodium right there and see for each individual meal, we'd hope that it would be under 500 milligrams per meal. Looking for a product that says sodium free would actually be better and even best would be to buy fresh food. People with high blood pressure can eat out. We'd like you to reserve those times for maybe holidays or special celebrations with your friends and family and cook most of your meals at home. When you do eat out, we would encourage you to speak with the wait staff and let them know that you're watching your sodium. Request that the chef make a low salt or no salt special sauce or meal for you. 